Hello, this is Chad Payne with Lint Software. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the new functionality available to Investor RT 12.5, which I hope will be of value to you. We'll jump right into some of the RTX developments, some new indicators and some added functionality to existing RTX indicators. Uh, the Volume Candles indicator has a new option, Equivolume or Equitime. If you choose Equivolume, the width of the candles uh, will be variable based on the volume within the candle. So the, the body of the candle will be wider if, the, if there's more volume and narrower if there's less volume. And that, that option is right here and it's only available when candles are turned on by themselves. And you can choose Equivolume or Equitime. Equitime might kick in when you have maybe a tick bar or a volume bar chart where you want to know how much time was spent within that candle that's not based on time. And this option is only available when profiles and text is turned off and you're just drawing the candle by itself. And while we're on the concept of candles, the paint, uh, paint bar indicator has been enhanced to paint the border of the candle. Uh, in the past, if you set up a paint bar indicator to paint background high to low, it would paint like this. And now we have a new configuration variable. I'll show you that. It's called paint bar high low border candle. That will default to true when you upgrade to 12.5 and you'll, the result will be this effect where there's a one pixel border around the candle. Keeps it nice and nice and tight that way. And you can combine this uh, painting of the, the border with the painting of the body to get an effect. Right now I'm painting the border with uh, up or down candles and the body is painted when the close is above a moving average. So you can, you can combine those and you can combine color markers, signal markers with that, but that's a nice combination to, to see uh, certain signals within the color of the border and the body of the bar itself or the candle itself. And next we have tick bar filtering. When you set up a periodicity as one tick bar, it generally plots one bar for every single trade. Uh, that can be very busy and, and, and very inefficient chart because sometimes there's 100 trades coming in a second on the ES. So we've added a filter uh, to show only the trades at or above a certain size. And you can see here if you specify ticks per bar of one, you can specify the minimum size and then it plots historically and live only trades that are equal to or above that size. And we've also added the ability to change that with a button, with a button indicator. So you can change it from minimum size 10, minimum size 20, and minimum size 100. And you can see down here I'm actually showing the volume per bar in this pane and the delta in this pane. So you can do all kind of analysis of just the larger trades in this way. Both the quote board indicator and the info box indicator are now exportable. Simply right click on the quote board and choose export data and the result will be a nicely formatted CSV file which, you, which opens up automatically in Excel and shows you each of the prices and their labels. So that allows you to quickly take quote board or info box information and paste it into a, a chat room, an email, uh, a spreadsheet uh, and do further analysis with it. And to the profile indicator, we've added a new custom duration called Too Visible. You see it right here. What that'll do is let you do playback, let you simulate playback very easily. I'm going to scroll back in this chart to the beginning of the day, and you'll see as I just scroll forward one bar at a time, that profile is going to develop. To, it starts at a specific date and time, in this case, the start of that day, and it will profile until the end of the visible area. So as you scroll forward, it's going to bring in that bar to the profile the new visible bar is going to be incorporated in the profile so you can see how the point of control, the value area high, the value area low change throughout the, the session. And you can just take your time scrolling one bar at a time and see how it reacted to the value area low, value area high, point of control, and, and uh, high volume nodes, low volume nodes, and so forth. We also continue to add to the info box possibilities with the profile indicator. We've added uh, average volume and price and duration, so you might want to look over this list. We've added uh, about 25 or 30 different items of data within the profile that you can that you can plot with the info box, and you can toggle that off with the plus key. Just hit the plus key on your keyboard, and you can toggle that on and off. Pivot points. The pivot point indicator can be based on generally daily data, but also weekly, monthly, even 30-minute data. Now if you specify weekly or daily data, you're going to see a W or an M preceding the label so you can clearly see which one's weekly, which one's monthly, and which one's daily by looking at the labels if you have 
uh, you know, all three of those add to the same to the same chart. And stepping back to exporting data, when you export zigzag data now by right-clicking and choosing uh, export data, you'll see a spreadsheet will open in Excel, and now we've added another column called duration. That's the duration in seconds. So a lot of good information about each leg of the zigzag is exported to, to Excel, and you can see all that here. You know, about 20 different columns now. A new RTX TX indicator called paint indicator allows you to take any custom indicator and paint it with up to four conditions. You'll see there's there's a couple different styles displayed in this chart. There's a lot of different ways you can draw it. Rounded histograms, dots, dotted lines. Uh, you'll see here we've painted CCI with uh, based on it being above or below certain values. You've got up to four different criteria that you can use to paint it and those criteria can involve uh, comparing it to another custom indicator, com comparing it to a constant, or having a, another signal altogether be true or false. So a lot of flexibility with this. You can see up here I've chosen dotted lines. I can simply change the size of those with the uh, keyboard. Uh, so a very powerful way to paint your custom indicators. Um, and I don't have time to go through all the functionality available here, but there's a lot of flexibility built into this indicator. Another new RTX indicator called Buy Sell Meter. This gives you the buying volume and selling volume and plots it, the percentage relative to each other here. You've got the selling volume on the right, buying volume on the left. You'll see it's 50.4% buying right or selling right now over this duration. And we got a negative 50, 56, 100 delta. And you'll see the duration here. We've got several different options. You can uh, do a manual reset and then it starts at zero. And then you can automatically reset it by simply clicking this clear button and reset it any time and it'll start building from there. You also have automatic resets, so it, it resets when it becomes even, uh, and it resets when it becomes close, less than a, a user specified percentage. And you can you can draw it medium, large, small, uh, and drag it, drag and drop it wherever you like in the chart. We'll also be rolling out a scatter plot and a divergence uh, RTX indicator during the 12.5 process. Scatter plot takes any two custom indicators and plots them against each other, one on the x-axis one on the y-axis and then draws a best fit line could be a linear regression could be a second order polynomial third, third order you choose which order um, degree polynomial you'd like to draw and it draws a best fit line through the data right now I'm plotting range against volume in this case daily range against daily volume and an RTX divergence indicator is in the works to allow you to plot divergence in various ways of price against a custom indicator like cumulative delta or between any two custom indicators. Session price is indicator. That's been around for a while. It's an RTX indicator, but now you can customize your labels. We have a couple of preset uh, choices for naming conventions you can choose, but then you can go in and customize. I'm just going to call this my RTH, and you'll see in the chart as I apply it. Now I've got my own custom label. You can label each of these 16 prices anything you like. And also, if you store it in, in a series of v-pound variables, those v-pound variables are going to be automatically labeled with your custom labels from the session prices. And a few less mis miscellaneous items. Um, there's a scrub holiday honor session configuration. If you turn that on now, when you right-click after a rollover and choose scrub data, um, sorry, scrub data holidays. That'll now honor the session instead of just blindly scrubbing all the data on that holiday date. So it'll actually scrub from the holiday date close of session back to the previous close of session, which is what most of you prefer. Also, layered bars can now be uh, changed using the button indicator. You'll see here the layered bars, uh, average bars, there's, there's in five different layered periodicities you can choose. But now you can get there through the button indicator, and you can read more about that in what's new. But you add a plus sign to your to your base periodicity, and then you choose uh, Heiken Ashi, average bars, so you can read more about what the details are there in the uh, what's new text. There's a new configuration variable reset one day charts on open. That means when you have a chart set to last one day, when the session opens, it'll wipe out that previous day and reset it to just the developing day. And that didn't happen in the past, it just appended to the previous day. So you can turn that on that to true if you'd like that to be the default. Also another config called scroll present new periodicity. When you change the periodicity in the chart using the button or just using the keyboard, uh, 
in the past it's always scrolled back to the present when you change periodicities but if you turn this to true it'll if you scroll back and you're looking at a certain period of time it'll stay in that period of time when you change periodicity so you can continue to analyze that same period changing from five minute to thirty minute to one minute so i hope you'll find these new features in twelve point five of value to you if you have any questions on any of these features email support at lensoft.com thank you <music>